if you're trying to solve unsolvable problem, you're gonna look like this. Well, the problem is solvable. Here is how. Hi, I'm Matt and this is Not Enough Tech and I'm finally a little bit happy because I've cracked a massive problem that was following me, following me for three days. But that's not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is a question. Is it night time yet? For us humans, this is easy. I look through the window, I see a bit of the sunshine, I judge the levels of the sun coming in and I know it is, well, the answer is clear as the day because it is the day outside and this is a terrible pun. But if you want to answer this question programmatically, eh, let's just say we're going to run into some issues. Now, there is a, a good news for you and the bad news for me. The good news is for, you, for you is this, that I've actually solved it for you and it's pretty easy to solve once you know how. The bad news for me is that I've solved it the complicated way before I actually figure out that there is an easier way. And in this video, I'm going to show you both solutions so you could learn a little bit uh, of different things, maybe a little bit more useful for you as well. And also you'll be able to answer the question, is it nighttime yet efficiently? So to actually answer this question, we have to define what night is. Now, if you Google this, obviously night is a uh, time period from sunset to sunrise. So let's define sunset and sunrise. They're both pretty much the same conditions depending on which direction the sun is moving and both are the moments when the center of the sun is aligned with horizon. Now if you google that a little bit more you'll quickly discover that we can talk about civil, nautical and astronomical night. Civil night happens when the center of the sun is six degrees below horizon. It's still fairly bright outside, you can still make out shapes and, st and some basic colors, and it lasts to the same conditions, so six degrees between, uh, before horizon, before uh, sunrise. Now, the next step up is the nautical, and this is historically taken from navigations over the waters, so people would be able to see the stars, and this happens when uh, center of the sun drops 12 degrees below horizon. And lastly, uh, for astronomers sake, we have astronomical night and that starts when the sun is 18 degrees below horizon, it's pitch black outside, the dark, the night is, uh, the sky is dark, unless you live in the UK, it's all grey because of light pollution and clouds. So once you've got your night picked and you want to know which night you want to define, uh, then there are some more complications. So, you probably know from a basic of geography that, you know, Earth circles around the Sun, it does that at the angle, which means the night and day amount differently depending on the time of the year. So in summer we have a longer days, in winters we have a longer night. So that's never is going to be the same value and we have to calculate this for a specific day. Now there are calendars that, uh, and tables that will do that for us and give us the value, however, there is a one problem with that. In order to decipher when it's actually night outside, we have to also specify the uh, coordinates because depending on where on Earth you are, um, the day and the night will have a different length. So for example, now in the Northern Hemisphere in the North Pole, it's, it's a night that lasts very, very long time for a couple of months and that will change later on this year. So once we have this, so once we have a set of coordinates, once we know which date it is, and once we know what kind of uh, night we're interested in, there is still one more thing that we have to establish, a time zone. <sighs> and if you ever dealt with the time zones, you know how much pain in the neck it can be, especially if you have to account for daylight saving. Before we dive in into this, let me explain why am I doing this and why I think this is quite interesting and also useful. Previously, I've used Big Timer Node in my uh, creations in Node Red. Big Timer is a massive timer that has lots of different conditions that you can check against and make stuff happen. But because it comes as a node, some of the values are really hard to extract if you just want to compare them in your regular function. 
and that's where I actually ran into a problem. I just wanted to check within the function if it's dark outside or not and it would be very handy to have a global variable saying time of the day and we'll say I don't know midnight or, or a quarter of the night or it's dark outside whatever you want that you can check against and do something with it. So with that in mind I figured if I'm going to collect all that information from the internet about the sunrise, sunset, length of the night, uh, times of the night, etc. I might as well just store it in a global variable so you could use it uh, for some core purposes, even if you would just want to create a clever clock. So with that said and that in the head, I hope that my calculations could replace some of the functionality of the big timer. Don't worry, big timer is still relevant for some of the other functions, however, Let's just jump into the node red right now and let's take a look what I've done, what I've done wrong and how to use that information to do something right. What you see on the screen is obviously node red and a couple of flows. Now if you're interested in the easy way, I'm gonna include the timestamp for you to jump in. But I would strongly recommend you to don't jump ahead just yet because we're gonna talk about interesting things you can do with time zones and getting information about it. So if you um, want to learn how to do it, stay here and you won't regret. Now this is the complicated way and I've uh, took the liberty of downloading a couple of information already. So the day lasted 10 hours and 13 minutes and the sunset was at 17.25. As you can see that's 11 minutes past sunset, so if I'm gonna check if it's night time yet, it'll tell me it is night. So to actually get to this information, as I've explained earlier, I needed to go through a couple of hoops. First of all, to get coordinates where you are or where the location uh, of the sunrise and sunset, the data has to be queried. I'm going to use the sunset and sim, uh, sunrise times, which basically takes the couple of uh, coordinates, which is uh, latitude and longitude, and spits out information about your day, which includes sunrise, sunset, solar, noon, day length, and then civil nautical and astronomical sunsets and sunrises. That information can be transformed later to calculate the different things. But the problem is all times are in UTC. So this is fine for me because I'm actually running on UTC, so I wouldn't have to do anything at all with this. But I do realize for 90% of you, <laughs> that's a different uh, time zone. and. For the purpose of this tutorial, I wanted uh, you to have actual valid uh, way of using this information. So, to create this tutorial, I thought, okay, so I need to be able to establish, because I didn't want you to query the offset yourself and do everything, I just wanted you to stick the your coordinates from Google Map and make it all work itself automatically, and that was the goal. So I've started with the coordinates and I'm entering the coordinates based on the uh, just location from the Google Maps. So you grab a sense of coordinates, you've got your latitude and your longitude. Uh, don't get the information about the zoom, just stick to those numbers. Remember about the minus two and stick it into a coordinate. Uh, that information is going to be called uh, by API. So we're going to get the uh, get the time zone. And you're gonna need your key and account it's free so you're not going to pay and basically what i'm just trying to establish i'm just trying to get information about your time zone nothing else i want to get that time zone so i would know where in the world are you in which time zone i know we're gonna be getting the information from your time zone to utc so i need an offset between your time zone and utc once I've got this, obviously I'm gonna set a couple of uh, global variables and I'm just going to set your time zone. So that's the time zone I receive, uh, it's stored in here. Then set the uh, longitude and latitude in the global variables because once I query this, you don't have to requery this again. It's gonna use the global variables to query the information each day for a fresh set of data. Now to calculate, uh, you can actually calculate the offset and the offset is going to be in seconds and there is a special API to use uh, to get this and this is the URL and all you have to do is basically get uh, from and to. Obviously from it's going to be UTC and that's a Europe London and to it's going to be that one we just queried using your coordinates. So once you've got that offset calculated, once the offset set, 
we are not interested in this anymore because offset's not going to change until you move. So I'm just processing that join request and then save it as a time zone offset, which is going to be time in seconds. It's important to have it uh, as a time in seconds because the calculation is going to be much easier to perform. Like on the side in here, you'll see all that time can be formatted into a different structure with a click. Uh, how I used to be able to do it. Anyway, uh, for now, uh, you'll be able to see that it has a time in seconds, uh, the Unix time. So that's going to that's gonna, that's going to be very easy to actually calculate it because all you have to do is just add the offset and recalculate the time to a human readable format. So that's basically is the outcome from this payload. It will give you all that information with a, um, for the it will give you the offset. Sorry. So let's uh, run it for you now. And I get offset. For me, the offset right now is zero. But if I'm gonna go and uh, query New York, New York, then I can get the coordinates for the New York. So let me just grab the data, put it in here, and you'll see I'm gonna have a different value, which is uh, gonna be five hours. So paste it here. So that's New York coordinates saved and let's redeploy it. And now when I run it, I'm going to have five hours difference. And if you don't believe me, multiply five hours by uh, 60 minutes and 60 seconds and you're going to get uh, minus um, 1800. So that's your time offset. So once this is saved, it's stored in a variable. And now once I've got this, the actual um, useful part is just using the offset and using your coordinates to get the sun information. Now for this, obviously I needed the coordinates, which I have, and I need to recalculate all these times using the offset I just acquired. So I'm getting the, um, using the API to get the information here. Uh, store it as a JSON for easy calculation and going to recalculate all the volumes. First of all, to recalculate the um, time zone, because I'm going to do it for so many, you can see in here, for so many different values. Don't, don't, don't get scared. This is all just copy and paste code with different global variables set. So each value have its own variable. Uh, I've created a small function which basically recalculates the time. So it takes the X and X is going to be the offset. And basically, as you can see, time zone offset in here, blah, blah, blah. So it takes the X, which is default and offset, and it uses the data and the value of it and creates adjusted time, which is basically the because the time uh, taken from here is uh, in milliseconds. So I have to divide it by 1000 to make it in seconds and then add the time offset in seconds and multiply it by uh, 1000 again because I wanted to get it in milliseconds again and then just return a new uh, adjusted time. So that function is going to be performed on every single aspect in here that I'm going to receive from that API apart from this uh, di day length in where I'm going to calculate how long is actual day. So uh, for this, I've got duration in uh, milliseconds. So I need to basically transform milliseconds, seconds, minutes, and hours to a human readable format, which is done as here in this function. And I return then human readable format uh, so you could read it. And it looks like, let me just run this. And it looks like this. So this is before it's been recalculated and later on when it's recalculated, it gets uh, the time in hours. When I receive information from um, the API, that information is stored in the JSON and basically I recalculate the time if it's time needs to be recalculated or if I need to adjust the time length, I use the other function in here and then pass the value from it and store it in a global variable using global set. And I do that for every type of the data. So for, uh, for your sunset, sunrise, solar room, die length, uh, civil, uh, and begin and end, nautical begin and end, and uh, astronomical begin and end. And that's pretty much it. And I was so happy and content because of it, because I've solved the puzzle. It took me a 
quite a while to calculate this and then I came across with the reference and if you go to uh, javascript time your reference uh, on here you'll see different things you can do and uh, I didn't spend that much time in here I just wanted to you know get information I need and use it in my tutorial and I've completely missed this as you can see, get time, time zone offset function, which returns the time difference between UTC, something we are interested in, and the local time based on your machine. So all that stuff we did until then, all of this, it's absolutely unnecessary because JavaScript contains a function which does that for you. And all I had to do is set the coordinates as I set them before for other global variables. And then when I process the information, I get all my usual stuff. Uh, transform the response to JSON, and then all I had to do to get the time zone offset is get the time zone offset and multiply it by 60 so I would get it the time zone offset in seconds rather than minutes because that's what it's giving you. And then all I had to do is just use the same uh, ways to kind of recalculate uh, the values. Now, I've changed the function slightly in here to make a basically return uh, just the minutes and um, just hours because I don't need anything else, so I made it shorter and everything else is done the same. So as you can see, by reading the reference correctly and taking your time to going through the functions to see what could actually help you, uh, you will save yourself a lot of time. So. The current state of affairs basically requires me to enter the coordinates runs and save it. Once the values are saved, all I have to do is just query the information and I've got everything stored in here. Now, that's not calculated yet because I do that uh, with uh, globals. So when I query the globals, I get the proper calculations of that. And yeah, that's pretty much everything for this flow. So if you're gonna use it, uh, just use the bottom section for the download I've included everything seen on the screen so you could take advantage of playing with the time zones as well and seeing how I kind of got into that for you. Right, I realized that wasn't the most interesting tutorial to follow. I hope I made it at least slightly amusing and uh, you got to laugh at my expense of doing things, especially when I discovered that last function. Uh, that only highlights the amount of research you're supposed to do before you embark on such a, a journey because you can have the time spent on development of something if you find the correct tools. Unfortunately, I discovered that way too late in my project and once I had everything written for coordinates or time zones and calculations, then I discovered I could do it much easier way and save myself time and processing power in the meantime. However, if you're interested in how to obtain the time zones, how to calculate the time zones and how to play with the data and create a coordinate system, hey, everything is there explained to you and you can download the files as well if you want to play about with this. If you just want to convert the time and get the information about the time to put it on your dashboard, go for the easy way. There is no, uh, um, there is no reason to complicate it. So with that said, guys, thank you so much for the um, viewership and for following me on social media because uh, I've noticed a lot of people recently joined the social media and getting updates in there. Also, I have a Reddit now where uh, basically I use Reddit as a comment section for each post. So if you go to the post, you'll find the link for the Reddit comments. Uh, I think that's everything needed for now so uh leave me a comment if you're interested in something else uh, let me know what you would like to see on the channel and for now i'll say thanks for watching and see you in the next video bye